shook the preacher's hand But I realized that I need to go much deeper than I had But I wanna go deeper Than just toting that black book Deeper Than just some pious look I'm gonna praise him 
I'm going to praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, it's coming down, down, down. Coming down, down, down. Oh, in the glory of the Lord. Coming down. Now when the saints begin to pray for the Lord to have his way, then the glory of the Lord is coming down. Well, this train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory, this train. Well, this train is bound for glory. If you want to go to heaven, then you got to live holy. This train is bound for glory, this train. Now, this train is just one station, this train. This train is just one station, this train. Well, this train is just one station, next to 38 Salvation. This train just one station, this train. Keep it rolling, keep it rolling, son, keep it rolling. They caught me off guard. Want me to name you one? Hmm? Huh? What? Ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. Ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down Ain't no grave Do one more. One more. 
One more. What would you like to do? Huh? King Jesus. There you go. From way down deep inside, I feel a burn. Don't think that I can bear. And I don't know of anyone with whom my heavy burdens I can share. And it makes me feel so helpless that in this life I cannot do one. Remember the Lord of hosts, the great I am, sweet Jesus, King of kings. Help me sing. Oh, he's King of kings. He's Lord of lords. The only one. There is. never known and in the darkest night he brings a ray of light just to lead me on then he gives me strength to carry on help me find that precious light of day and he makes me realize that in these troubled times, he's the only way. Help me, Julie. Oh, he's king of kings. He's Lord of lords. The only one. There is no more. The Alpha and all. never know and in the darkest night he brings a real light to lead me on then he gives me strength to carry on help me find that precious light of day and he makes me realize that in these troubled times He's the only way. Oh, he's king of kings. He's Lord of lords. The only one. There is no more. The Alpha and Omega. Jesus, we come to you today, God. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, Lord. We know that today represents a homecoming, Lord. But, Lord, there is going to be a great homecoming one day in heaven, yes. God. Lord, and I, I want to thank you, Lord, for the people that you've placed at this church since its inception, Lord. Since the ones that diligently 
seeked after you, searched after you, Amen. endured, Lord, through Amen. hard times. Amen. Lord, that we could have the establishment we have today as we call this building church. Lord, I just thank you, God, that those people faithfully endured, Lord, faithfully ran the race. That, Lord, we could stand here today, Lord, and glorify you, raise your name up on high, Lord, that you are the almighty God, Amen. the almighty Savior, Lord. I think today as we hear of people in sickness and illness and the COVID that's running rampant, Lord, and people that are in hospitals and especially yeah. Cheryl, Lord, yeah. and Marcia, yeah. and people like that that we personally know, the Lord, that are enduring yeah. hard times right now, but... God, even in the hard times, even in the trials and Amen. tribulations, Amen. even in the sickness yeah. and the illness, God, you are still God. Amen. You are still the Almighty, yes. God. You are still our rock. You are still yep. our salvation, Hallelujah. God. Lord, in today, God, let us not let this day go by. Lord, we, I know that it's a great day that's going to have, and we have a whole fellowship hall of food over there, yep. Lord, that I'm sure is going to be tasty to our, our soul, Lord, and to our a stomach, but God, let us endure and let us feast at your table today yeah. while we are here, Amen. Lord. We sit at a table that we do not belong to, God. Yeah. But Lord, even Amen. though in our That's past, even though in our problems and even though in our disabilities, God, we still get to sit at Woo, your king's glory. table, God. Yeah. Help us today, Lord, to glorify your name up on high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Golly, I see we got Jeff Mays and his wife with us today. Won't you come up and sing for us? Huh? Would you do that? Could you do that? Okay, come on up. Yeah. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, Dion, good afternoon. Amen. Hey, hey, man. Glad to have you. Where are you from? Huh? Glad to have you guys today. Right. Oh. Hey, Amen. Hey, there's one up there on the thing, and then you can give her that one, and we're just ready to have some church. Yeah. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The maze. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Jesus is alive. An empty cross, empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day. Celebrate that Jesus is alive. He is alive. And oh, a happy day, a happy day, when you wash my sin. Jesus, you are mine. Endless joy and perfect peace. Earthly pain finally has ceased. Celebrate, Jesus is alive. Oh, he is alive. And oh, a happy day, a happy day when you wash my sin away. Jesus is alive. 
grave. An empty cross, empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Celebrate, Jesus is alive. Oh, he, he is, is alive. alive. And, and oh, happy day, a happy day. When, when you, you wash my sin away, oh. A happy day, a happy day, I'll never be the same, oh, a happy day, a happy day, when you wash my sin away, oh, happy day, a happy day, forever I am changed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Man. You can be seated if you want to. Brother McNeely gave me a very challenging task when he called. He said, comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. <laughs> he didn't really say that. I made that up. <laughs> Wounded and forsaken, I was shattered by the fall broken and forgotten feeling lost and all alone then summoned by the king into the master's court lifted by the savior cradled in his arms I was carried to the table seated where I don't belong I was carried to the table swept away by his love and I don't see my brokenness anymore Cause I'm seated at the table of the Lord I was carried to the table The table of the Lord Fighting thoughts of fear Wondering why he called my name I'm not good enough to share his cup this world had left me lame but even in my weakness the Savior called my name and in his holy presence I'm healed and unashamed I was carried to, to the, the table, table seated where I don't be I was carried to the table Swept away by his love And I don't see my brokenness anymore Cause I'm seated at the table of the Lord I was carried to, to the, the table, the table of the Lord. I'm living proof. What the mercy of God can do If you knew me then, you believe me now He turned my whole world upside down Took the old and he made it new That's what his mercy can do And I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome It's your goodness and mercy And the power of the blood I'm so glad that my freedom 
wasn't based on what I've done. It's your goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. It's your goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. Thought I deserved to be six feet beneath the earth for all the things I've done, the things I've said, the choices made that I regret. Oh, I would still be lost, but for the mercy I've got. But I'm alive to tell the story How I've overcome It's your goodness and mercy And the power of the blood I'm so glad that my freedom Wasn't based on what I've done It's your goodness and mercy And the power of the blood it's your goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. I'm living proof of what the mercy of God can do. If you knew me then, you believe me now. He turned my whole world upside down. Took the old and he made it new. That's what his mercy can do. And I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome. It's your goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's your goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. You can lock me up in a prison and throw away the key and take away the vision from these eyes that now can see. Deprive me of the food I eat And even by my hands and feet But as long as I still know Jesus Then I can still go free Go free, tell me what kind of man would reach down his hand and do this for me, unworthy to live, not fit to kill, but then a man on a cross, he put me said that I could still go free. Now I never could quite understand why this king would come down from his throne and don the robes of an earthly man. Feel the pain of flesh 
and balm Then to lead her walk The lonely path That led him to Calvary Where those blood red stains They broke all my chains And said that I And, and do, do this for me, unworthy to live, not fit to kill. But then a man on a cross, he put me in his will and said that I could still go free. Where those blood red chains they broke all my chains and said that I could still go free Thank you Jesus I'd like to introduce the members of my band There's the only singer in the bunch. <laughs> My wife, Joyce. You went to Goreville School. You knew she had pipes, especially if you ever disobeyed in the hallway. I just can't believe where my life was at all I know is my heart was broke I don't want to go back there ain't no explanation for how I saw the light see he found me and set me free and brought me back to life you can blame it on the transformation I'm changed down to my core but this love is real I can't sit still my name's not shame no more I'm gonna praise 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 like I'm changed 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 Cause brand new looks real good on me so I praise like I've been changed. I'm gonna praise 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 like I'm changed changed on me so I praise like, like I've, I've been changed. changed baby he came to you when everything was fine or maybe your world was upside down he hit you right between the eyes it doesn't matter where it happened the Grange Hall Baptist Church you gotta move your feet cause you are free you've never been more alive come on and praise 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 like your change 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 Brand new looks real good on you, so praise like you've been changed. Come on and praise, praise, praise like your change, change, change. Brand new looks real good on you, so praise like you've been changed. Maybe he came to you when everything was fine. Maybe your world was upside down. He hit your eye between the eyes. Doesn't matter where it happened. At 7 or 95, you got to move your feet because you are free. You've never been more alive. Come on and praise, praise, praise. Like, like your change, change, change. Yeah. Brand new looks real good on you. So praise like you've been changed. Come on and praise, praise, praise. Like your change, change, change. Yeah. Brand new real good on you so praise like you've been changed hallelujah give him a hand I 
love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my life, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Yes, I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Yes, I, I have lived in the goodness, goodness of God. God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Because your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know 
Thus saith the Lord, and I'm so glad I've learned to trust Him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that Thou art with me and will be with me till the end Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I prove him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh to trust him more and I'm so glad I've learned to trust him precious Jesus Savior friend and I know that thou art with me and will be with me till the end Thank you for that beautiful, beautiful song. For, for a little bit here, I'm going to take you to a passage of Scripture, to Proverbs 29, verse 18, probably one of the first that I memorized as a young Christian. Didn't really know much about it or understand it, just felt good looking at it and, and quoting it. And and I, I got to thinking here this week about this passage of scripture and it says where there is no vision people perish and you know really you, you know we all want to be successful we want to go far we we want big things you know we we want to see our kids do good we we want to have good jobs and and make money and and live well you know Amen. I mean, really. Amen. You know, or think we do anyway. But I got to thinking about this passage of Scripture. And I got to really dissecting it, looking it up, you know, breaking it down. What does it really, really mean? Because some things that you think mean one thing mean another. Till you begin to study the Scripture and break it down, you know. And this passage of Scripture is easily misinterpreted, okay? Because we think that, you know, where there's no vision, where there's no new buildings or successful business or, you know, uh, big dreams, you know, then, then you know, we, we failed as, as a Christian. But really, that's not what this is meaning, okay? And I'm going to break it down and I'm going to share you, share with you what it's meaning. I'm going to read it to you first, okay? And it'd be a good and to highlight. It'd be good and to underlie. I thought, here we come this morning. Just got up and I get a phone call from Fred Montsinger. And if some of you don't know, I'll share it with you now. His wife, he found her in the kitchen floor. And uh, she, had, they thought, had a stroke. And she did have a stroke. She's been suffering COVID here for the last couple weeks. And... Uh, so they flew her to St. Louis. She's at University Hospital. You just heard the report that, that they did surgery on her. And, and, and already, you know, this morning, you know, this is our homecoming day. And then we have Sister Marcia that's in the hospital and Sister Linda Reed that's in the hospital. Uh, 
you know, we have several that's got COVID. We have several that has got things going on. We have a couple sheets of paper up here with names on them that people have needs, you know, and, and it just seemed like, man, it's just trying times. And we think about in Second Timothy chapter 3, just trying times. You know, you want to celebrate, but you want to fight through your mourning, if you will. You, you know what I mean? You, you want to push. You want to keep giving God glory and praise, but you struggle. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you try to keep uh, water off the fire, keep the fire going. You know what I mean? And because God's still worthy to be praised, he's still God. <laughs> you know, he's still able, amen? And he's still a prayer answering God. He still performs miracles, amen? And we know that. And most of these people that's on this prayer list know that, you know? But old Satan, man, I'm telling you, he's, he's, he's raised his ugly head. And, and I, you know, I've read the back of the book. I know he's going to get his, you know. But I think about this passage of Scripture kind of goes right along with the fact, you know. What it's really saying is if there's no revelation, if there's no guidance, if there's no prophetic vision, if you will, if, if there's uh, no understanding, okay? If there's no word, there's no vision. If you read on, it says, Where there's no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. <laughs> In other words, that if, if there's no understanding of God's word, okay, you can have all the visions you want, but if you don't see clearly and understand the Word of God, that God has a Word, He has a plan, He has a purpose, okay? He's written us a letter, okay? And if we don't take heed to God's Word and look at the Word clearly for what it is, okay, then, man, we, we become loose. We, become, we go wild, okay? I mean, there's no guidance, if you will. So if you'll keep the law, happy will you be. But if not, you're doomed to perish. You'll not make it without the Word. If you don't stand and follow God's Word, read and study God's Word, that is the direction. It's man's counsel for every difficulty, if you will. Every man's circumstance is the Word of God. But he said, my people perish for the lack of knowledge, okay? There's a watered-down gospel in the area in which we live today. Come on. People don't know the truth. They don't break open the Word of God. They don't see it for what it is. It's like when Moses went up on the mountain, and he came back down, and he heard the cry of the people, the party, and that was going on, you know? There in Exodus 32, 23, Okay? And, and the people had gone wild. They had got away from what God had told them to do, okay? And they began to worship idols, okay? And was caught up in the things of the world. And what happened? Their enemies laughed at them. You don't think Satan's laughing at us? Because we got the antidote. We got the power in the name of Jesus. God's still on the throne. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's still God. Amen. He, I'm telling you, he took the sting out of death. He forgave us of our sin. He went to prepare for us. He left us a comforter. He left us a guide. He left us a route to take. And the people are perishing because they won't take heed with a vision to the word of God. We wonder why that we, we, we lose faith, okay, if you will. We doubt, okay. We're, we're not committed. We're not dedicated, you know, and we're not making it. People fr going every which way. It's because we need the Word of God back in our life where there is no vision. And I knew that day that I, that, that I surrendered my life to God. I knew God had a plan and purpose for my life, and I knew I was bought and paid for and that I'm God's. I allow the set, uh, Satan to have my life all them years. And now I surrendered it to God. And in all this chaos and all the frustrations and all the disappointments, uh, God's still God. He's still my Lord. He's still my Savior. I'm still, by the help and the grace of God through the Holy Spirit, I'm going to give him praise.
And when it's a struggle, and we don't feel like it, if you will, amen, and I got to fight and keep pressing toward the mark, I'm going to give him praise. By the grace of God, by the help of God, by the mercy of God, hallelujah, I'm going to continue to pray, I'm going to continue to preach the truth, and I'm going to let God be God, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I'm not giving up. Amen, I've come too far to turn back now. Where there is no vision, people perish. Noah could have said, he could have said, God, I don't build boats. Amen, come on. Moses could have said, I don't like people. I'm tired and sick of people. Putting up with them, griping, murmuring, complaining, but he went on. Come on, amen. David could have said, no, I'm not fighting giants. Come on. But he did, amen. And then Mary could have said, I'm not having baby Jesus. But they all took God at his word. And therefore, it gave them a vision, okay? It gave them an avenue to take, and it blessed their life. And it blesses ours because of them. Because by faith, amen? Something was asked Helen Keller one time, and I, I wrote this down. It said, Helen Keller was asked, what, what would be worse than being born blind? To which she replied, having sight without a vision. Having sight without a vision. See, when, when you include vision into God's word, when, when there's understanding, then there's strength. And then there's faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Then there's courage. And then there's comfort. And then there's peace. And then there's forgiveness. And then there's grace. Amen. And then there's love. And then there's guidance. Amen. Then there's forbearance. And then there's patience. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Anybody here tonight or today? <laughs> Whatever it is. Amen. Not our day. And you know, you think about where there is no vision, people perish. Then there's goals. I pray, you know, we wouldn't be where we're at today. I thought all the people... Last night, it's like I didn't sleep. All these people flashed up in my mind that had come through Grange Hall over the years. The dear old saints of God who kept throwing a wood on the fire. Huh? Kept stirring the fire. Amen? Stayed faithful. Stayed committed because they knew the Word of God, that God had a plan. They studied the Word of God. They stood on the Word of God. They, it said, blessed are they when they hear it, they keep it. They kept the Word of God. They applied it to our life. They was a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Come on. But there's so many people don't have a vision. We live in a world without a vision. See, that's why they want your Bible. That's why they want our church. Amen. That's why they want to take the Holy Spirit out of everything. They want to take in God we trust off the dollar. Amen. Take it out of the college. Take it out of the courthouse. And for, and for many, they've took it out of the church. God's not in the church no more because they've watered down the truth with a worldly gospel. Jesus said, you must be born again. <laughs> Amen? He said, there's no other way but the way of Jesus. <laughs> huh? He said, you must die daily. You must come to the cross. You must be born again. Marvel not. You must be born again. There's a heaven, there's a hell. But a lot of people, a lot of preachers won't tell you that. You can't have Jesus without the devil. <laughs> and you can't have heaven without the hell. Amen? But you know, after all the years, the church has been plugging on. Why? Because of the word. It, it will not return void. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word, hallelujah, my vision, my understanding, amen, will never pass away. I don't know about you all. I got something to stand on today, hallelujah. It's the word of God. It's the living word. You can go ahead and burn it. They tried to burn it in the Old Testament, amen. They cut it in pieces. They throw it in the fire. But you can't get rid of it. It's still the living word of God. It's infallible. It's indestructible. It's what's kept the fire burning here at the Green Hall Church, amen. And it's going to keep us going till Jesus comes back. <laughs> Through sickness, heartache, pain, and death, God's word, still God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. Can anybody shout God's word? Hallelujah. Amen. And you think about today. If your marriage, if your family don't have God's word, you know some of you come, you never break it open. You never study it. You, you, you never have a devotion. 
You never read a, a verse. And I'm going to tell you, if you're, not, if, if you're not careful, I'm telling you, it'll cause you because there's no restraint, okay? There's nothing to hold you. You're, you're not beyond doing anything. I want you to know one thing. I'm saved by the grace of God through faith, okay? But Kevin McNeely's not beyond ever doing anything wrong. <laughs> I don't want to. Sometimes I want to. But let me tell you something. As long as we're in this flesh, we're weak. And we need the Word of God to guide us the right way. Otherwise, you'll go astray. Folks, I'm telling you, if you, we wonder why the world's acting the way it's acting, living the way it's living. I'm going to tell you why. They've gone wild. Why? They left off the Word of God. It's not in their home. It's not in their life. They've not applied it to their heart, and they wonder what's wrong. They live any way they want to live. They justify their actions. They compromise. They change Scripture to satisfy them, if you will. Okay? Happy is he who keeps the law. A lot of people won't keep the law. God tells us what to do, and we neglect it. We're ignorant to the fact. We don't do it. We want to be saved. We want to go to heaven, but we want to live the way we want to live. But God's taught us and showed us another way to live. And that's the only thing that's going to sustain you. If you're not careful, you'll be thinking like they're thinking. You'll be walking like they're walking. You'll be talking like they're talking. You'll be living like they're living. If you don't take heed to the Word of God, you can come to church Sunday after Sunday. Don't make no difference. Amen. Might make you feel good. Huh? But unless you take that word and start applying it to your life, it's a weapon for every good soldier, and you need to get you one. You need to make a, a, be a doer of it. Come on. And where there is no vision, people perish. Okay, what's wrong? What's wrong? You want, well, why don't our politicians do what they're doing? That's because they ain't applying the word of God to their life. <laughs> Amen? That's why. You know what I'm saying? Why, 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 why do they legalize sin? Because if they're not applying the word of God, to their life. Could you imagine the things that could be changed if we just get back to the Word of God? Huh? Get back to the understanding, the vision, the revelation. Everybody's question, what's going to happen? What's going to i tell you what, you best get in the Word of God. You best prepare. Huh? When's Jesus come back? I don't know. He's coming back. I believe it. But I'm going to just, I, I want to be where he wants me to be. I want to do what he wants me to do. I'm going to lay hold to the Word of God. And that's what's going to keep me going. That's the only thing that's going to keep me going. And I'm telling you, it's tough. There's a battle out here. There's a battle going on right now with our people in our church physically. And they need help. But I know what can get us through it. It's this Word. Amen. It's what's got you through. I've been with you families. I know throughout all the years. I've seen your children die. I've seen your spouses die. I've seen tragedies in your life. I've seen things when you didn't think you could ever go on. You're sitting here today because of the Word. I know what it, the Word does. <laughs> it's everlasting. Amen. It's the way. If you're going to make it, the world will tell you different. But listen, you best listen to God's Word. Amen. Where there is no vision, people perish. You'll fail. You'll be doomed. It's easy to go with the flow. But I'm telling you, it's hard to be a Christian. It takes work. It takes determination. I'm telling you, you got to batten down the hatches. <laughs> you got to dig in. Amen. And you're going to have to dig in more now because we've been spoiled. Amen. And I'm telling you, we got to get serious with God. We got to get serious in our prayer life and our commitment. I will not survive it. we will not make it. And I'm asking you this morning, there's a lot of needs for a lot of people. And we believe and know the power of prayer. Amen. Don't we? Amen. First, I'm going to ask you about yourself this morning. And then before, before you pray for somebody else, won't you just pray for yourself? Where there is no vision, people perish. What about the understanding of God's will for your life? You think about it, you know. In order to have a vital relationship, man, you've got to listen. You've got to listen. And if you don't listen, you don't pay attention, you neglect God's word, you'll not have a vital relationship with God. That's just the way it is. You'll just, it'll be surface. You know how some relationships you have with somebody? That's the way you, uh, many people have it with God. You need to personally have it with God. And God's asking you this morning as an individual, 
Where do you stand as an individual? What have you allowed to creep in? How far have you got away from the Word of God? You know, what's God showing you? What's He teaching you through everything that's going on now? You know, where are you at? You know, are you getting deeper, deeper with God, closer to God, more intimate with God, you know, more personal with God? Are you just touching the surface? I'm looking at all the surroundings, but not looking hold to the Word of God in a vision. What's the understanding for me? I know I have responsibility and obligation as for me and my house, for me and Carla and Jonas. We have a great responsibility. I hear this all the time on Monday nights. Many people who sit in here on Monday nights will pray for your children. They'll call your children's names out. They'll call your marriages out. They'll call me out. They'll call my wife out. They'll call my son out. I think, thank you. <laughs> thank you for calling my family out. You know what I mean? That's personal. And I just thank God for people who's willing to sacrifice their time of prayer to see that somebody else makes it. Amen? Now, I'm going to read some names to you, okay? Alan Reach, Dave Juvers, Chris Duncan, Dale King, Jane Ann McNeil, Leon Reagan, Doogie Fox, Lily Boatwright, Tom Moore, Leroy Rungi, Helen Owens, Connie Dotson, Bob Pritchett, Vince Holford, Sherry Armerode, Earl Blankenship, Neil Blankenship, Dave Juvers, Linda Reed, Marsha Hunley, Ed Lampley, Dick and Pat Gill, Michelle and Rod Romaine, Andy Rometta, Bill Femister, Brody King, Scott Hancock, Pat King, Parton family, Nancy Laux, Grew family, Betty Duggar, Kathy Maltzinger, the Starwalt family, she passed away, Judy Hastings, did I mention Sherry on the road? Cheryl Stewart and Jackie. John Black. I asked you this morning. Okay, God's gave us another year. Hallelujah. He gave us another year on this corner. A church established in 1910. You know, churches come and go. But praise God, we've been able to, be ha to hang in there. Amen. You know, and it's for the long haul. <laughs> Amen. Are you in it for the long haul? I'm asking you this morning. First, would you personally come and say, listen, I, now you got insurance on your house, you got on your car, you got life insurance policies. We got it on this church. You have it on your soul. Are you really ready to meet God? If God was to come back, would you be ready? Where would you go? Would you go to heaven or you go to hell? Huh? You have the head knowledge, but not the heart knowledge, you know? Do you believe in prayer? Do you ever pray? Do you sacrifice time in prayer? Do you ever read or study the Word? Have you never been baptized? You call yourself a Christian, and you've never through, followed through with baptism? How come? Why? I mean, where there's no vision, no understanding of God's Word to follow through and do God's will, we neglect it? You let your children neglect your word, what do you do? Well, you either make them do what's right or they'll shame you. Come on. But we call ourselves the church and we want to go to heaven, but for many of us, we don't want vision. How come? We want to go the way of the world. We want to see how much we can get by with. We kind of want to live worldly, but we want to be churchy. You know, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Romans 6, 1, God forbid. I, I mean, it's time to get real. I really believe that God's going to separate the sheep from the goat. You're either going to get in, you're going to get out. You're either going to be double-minded or wishy-washy, lukewarm, or you're going to be seriously hot. You know, God's coming back to get to church without spot or blemish. Come on. And it's time to get real with God today. It's our homecoming. This corner is committed to God. It's just a building. You know, it's a building. We leave here, you know, it's empty. It don't mean nothing. You can have big, fancy buildings. That don't mean nothing. You can be big and fancy. You ever seen a big, fancy home and it rotten inside? No love. 
No grace, fight, holler, cuss, stomp, spit. Not pretty. Pretty outside, ugly inside. Huh? It's not about what all you got. It's what you got in here. Amen? And so God challenged you today. I'm telling you, I had to push today. Doggone, I had to push it. I could have said, I'm not preaching today. I don't feel like it. Huh? Just call church off. You know what I'm saying? See, some of you, you just want to call everything off. We will never have nothing if you call it off. But I know what the Word says. Huh? And because of the Word, amen, I'm going to preach if all possible. Amen? You want to do something great for yourself and your family? You'll take the Word of God and apply it to your life. And when you do, you'll care about other people. And you'll pray for them. You'll care about their happiness and their reputation. If you don't, you better check out your heart. Something's wrong. Some of you can't even get up and go pray at the altar. You're too good. Might mess your clothes up. Somebody might see you come and pray. Some of you, it's time for you to start praying. You know what I'm saying? Time to get off the milk. Throw the bottle away. Throw your passy away. Well, let's go. Some of you, you never commit. You never commit. And there's no vision. And if you get a vision, you'll commit. It'll change your life. You won't be the same. Come on. So I ask you today. You, you know God's answered prayer. He's met the needs in your life. How he gave you clothes, shoes on your feet. Amen. You know, nice. What size shoe you wear, Jeff? I don't know. You got a small feet. Nine and a half, huh? What size shoe you got? Thirteen. Thirteen? No kidding. Huh? Them not them tennis shoes? Huh? Them slip-on shoes? Tennis? Huh? What size is yours? That'll work. Let me see them. I was going to do this today. But anyway, I'll tell you what. I got sidetracked. And went, Gosh, you made a 12? Huh? Yeah. 12 wide. Gosh, all right. I can't wear them. Gosh, I'd throw a shoe. <laughs> Who's got 12? Who's got 12 in, in tennis shoe? Anybody got a 12? In, who? Who? Who are you pointing at? John, you got 12? Well, yeah, John's hurt, though. Huh? No, what you got, Trey? Nine? Gosh. You ain't got athlete's feet, do you? <laughs> oh, them's Asics. That's what I wear anyway. Gosh, you guys. That's a 12? What size you wear? <laughs> yeah, let me have that other one. I guess. You guys are stretching your shoes. I was going to wear my tennis shoes this morning, and I got sidetracked. You know why I was going to wear them? Because there ain't a time that I don't ever see Jeff Mays. I don't care what kind of outfit he's got on, he's got on tennis shoes. I'm saying, am I right? He's always got on tennis shoes. And I thought, it doesn't matter what he wears, he's got on his tennis shoes. And I thought, in my older age, I need to start wearing tennis shoes with my suit. Because I might run. 
I might like to run. You ever want to run? Running's fun, man. Huh? Because I know I like running. It makes me feel good, man. I love to run. You know why? Because I have a vision. I have the Word. And I know what the Word has done for me. And because of knowing the Word, He gave me something worth living for. He gave me a direction in life. He gave me the forgiveness of sin. He gave me a hope. He renewed me in my spirit and my mind. Amen. He gave me a drive. He gave me a burning down in my heart and my bones. Amen. And when it's tough, huh? And when you struggle and you're disappointed and you're down, I just want to keep running. I want to keep running. That's why it's good to have a pair of tissues around. You know what I'm saying? Some of you like to run. Some of you Baptists, you need to take a run sometime. <laughs> hey, you need to see, you need to see, really, you, you, you know, really, what's God done for you? You think about it. You think about what God, he's did the miraculous for you. I thought, you know what, I thought about you too the other day. May I ask in front of all these people, how old are you, Richard Maldy? 94 year old. <laughs> Tougher than a pine knot. Huh? Goes, does, loves life, loves the outdoors, loves the old things of life. Huh? He just keeps running. He's not going to give in. Are you? Huh? Are you, Richard? <laughs> huh? I just ask you t today, you think about what God's done for you. Huh? You can't help but want to run. You might not run physically, but you'll run in your heart. You'll run your hand up. <laughs> you'll run your mouth open and say, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Think about it. What he lets me do, the friends I got, the church I pastor, how could I not give him thanks and praise? You think about the goodness of life. Let you get up and go and do things. I went all to him. I can't help but being moved in my spirit. Every week, go to the bank, put the paycheck in. huh? Go to the store and be able to buy things. Go get something good to eat. And have a feeling down here, a good feeling to know everything with me and God's okay. Because I've sat there when it wasn't okay. And it's a miserable life. Amen? I don't know about you, but I think I'll just keep on running. Some of you need to run the altar. I'll never forget one Sunday I told the person sitting by me, get out of my way. Excuse me. I'm going to the altar. I'm telling you, you'd think we'd run to church. We have a pandemic people sick. They're dying. Hospitals are full. There's divisions. And why aren't we running to the Word of God? Why aren't we? Why in the house full, folks? We need help. There's only one can help us. His name is Jesus. Jesus. But if you don't read the Word... You'll run wild. You'll go loose. It won't mean nothing to you. You won't take it serious. There are some people who take it serious. They'll be ready to meet God. Would you guys, would you give us a song? I'm asking this morning. Huh? You think about it. What should I pray today? What should I pray? Huh? Think about it. Let, let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we failed in many ways in our commitment, our dedication to you. God, we've not been serious like we should. God, forgive us. Help us, God, to be restored in our spirit, mind, and body. Help us, God, to overcome temptation. I pray today for all these families here 
God, you know our hearts. You know where we stand. Convicted us. Convict us of our wicked ways. Help us, God, just to stay faithful in the Word. Overcome our temptations and our weaknesses. To be renewed in our spirit, mind, and body. God, today, in Jesus' name, have your way with us. God, we ask it. Lock me up in a prison and throw away the key. Take away the vision from these eyes that now, now can see. But as long as I know Jesus, then I can still go free. That I can still go free. Now what kind? this flyer or uh, if you want to get a shirt sign up to get a shirt and it's a fundraiser for the youth okay turn it in to Aaron and Mandy all right 
I think there's some out on the uh, desk there in the foyer, okay? Also, the Braden Fall Party, which will be October 9th at 5 p.m. down on Buffalo Gap in Goreville. And uh, you need to uh, text her and let her know if you're coming. This is out in the foyer, okay? Look at it, okay? Also, Awana's is going to start October 3rd, 5.30 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. They need help in a Awana program. You can sign up online, Grange Hall Facebook page, or text or call Terry or Lindsay Milburn, okay? Uh, actually, call Lindsay, okay? Okay. Okay. They, they'd love you to help. It's a great cause. It, see, where there's no vision, it's the word. That's what Awana is, is the word. There's a vision there. There's an understanding there. There's a revelation there. And that's what we need. That's why so many has gone wild. You heard of that girl's gone wild? <laughs> They'll go wild. That's why they need the word. Amen? But see, that was a really top show, you know. A lot of people watch that show because, you know what, that's what people want. Man, we, how, how about God's people going wild huh, on his word? Amen? Yeah. That wouldn't be too popular, though. Okay, Sherry Alma Road. Okay, they're going to have fundraiser for her November what? November 6th at the Goreville School. And they, they're asking for donations or if you could bake something and take it down there. All the information is out in the foyer. Okay? Good cause. Please remember those on the prayer list, okay? There'll be no church tonight, okay? We do have you want to come over and fellowship with us. We're not in a hurry to go home. That's one reason why we're not having church tonight. We want to have fellowship all afternoon and have fun, get to meet people, and uh, it, it's neat. We, just come on over. They got some good food. I'm telling you, I'll, you'll love it. And uh, they're, they're being as safe as they can and serving the food to you, okay? So, okay, and you don't, you, they took care of everything is what I'm saying. And don't forget the shoe boxes for Christmas, remember. Don't forget them, all right? Anything else that I missed? Yes, Judy Hastings, she in here? Is she in here? No, okay. All right, anything else I missed? Okay. All right, then. All right. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you for a wonderful day. And we thank you, God, for the Mays family coming and, and singing for us and the great job they did. We thank you for our band and what they always do for us, God, that we take for granted. And, God, we thank you for the word that you brought forth today. And, God, we thank you for all those that's prepared that food over there in the fellowship hall. We thank you, God. A special blessing on them today. And God, thank you for the food you've provided spiritually and physically. And God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. And we pray for all these on the prayer list. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, hey, just go over there and get in line. They'll tell you what to do. They'll serve you, okay? Don't run off. You run off now. You're a heathen. Well, I was sitting by my window. On a cold and cloudy day When I saw the first to roll And just to carry my mother away Now will the circle be unbroken By and by, Lord, by and by There's a better home awaiting in the sky in the sky So I told the undertaker Undertaker Won't you please drive slow For this body That you're hauling Lord I hate to see her go Now the circle Be unbroken By and by Lord a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. 
Nacht 